Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new RT1 Exchange video. This is the channel where we explore and we continue exploring the world of fine and rare wines. So today we're rounding up our tour of the fine wines from Bordeaux with the fourth and last episode of this series dedicated to the great Bordeaux wine region of France, some of the greatest wines on the planet. So after we looked at the wines from Saint-Emilion and Pomerol in episode 1, before we dug into the Médoc and the wines from Sauternes with episode 2 and 3, you can catch up on all of those previous episodes browsing around the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a few other areas and wines from Bordeaux that may not be as obvious as the other three we looked at but that also deserves some attention from who is looking at investing on and collecting incredible wines starting with the wines from the Grave and Pessac Leonia. The south of the Bordeaux city, what is altogether referred to as a Grave area, is certainly home to some of the most reputable wines in the whole Bordeaux region. You have to know that historically Grave is considered the birthplace of Bordeaux's high quality red wines. Properties here had acquired a reputation for producing top wines as early as the 14th century. That's hundreds of years before the Dutch wine merchants and producers famously drained the marshes of Medoc. So the northern part of Bordeaux, of the left bank of Bordeaux, the Medoc, that came to prominence with the 1855 classification that we talked about before, was just virtually a swamp before the 18th century. And all of the top chateaus that we know today that are so prestigious in Medoc, well, didn't exist while in Grave, they did. It's worth having in mind and remembering. But wines from Grave were not classified before 1953, where the classification, official classification, happened. That's for the red wines, some wines, some chateaux emerged as Grand Cru classes, while the dry whites, which are fantastic, and we'll get back to this in a minute, were classified in 1959. Now, later in 1987, a distinct appellation encompassing the northern part of the Grave area, so that's to the south of the city of Bordeaux, was created the Pessac Leonian appellation. So this is a virtually a newly created appellation. 87 is fairly young for appellations in France, but it encompasses all of the top Grand Cru classes of the Grave areas. So three things, three things that you need to remember out of this, and I may add a little fourth one as a bonus just for you. One chateau in this area was in fact already classified in 1855. You may remember it affirming that it had already been identified as early as 1855 as one of the most outstanding wines of Bordeaux, and that's, yes, of course, Chateau Aubryon, which is in fact one of the five premier Grand Cru classes, the first gross for their red wines on the left bank, alongside 1855 estates superstars that we know, Chateau Latour, Lafitte, Mouton, and Margot. Its neighbor that is called Chateau La Mission Aubryon is owned by the same owner, is also a standout feature chateau in this area. Those are by far the two top estates to the south of Bordeaux. But beyond those, the best chateaux in this area, Grave and Pessac Leonian, south of Bordeaux, are the ones classified in 19. 59. I'll have the list in the video description if you want to see them all and look them up, but look out for the top names such as Chateau Pape Clément, Aubais, Misso Lafitte or Domaine de Chevalier. Now this area is not only excellent for making red wines, which are generally on a slightly milder and smoother style than those from the Médoc. Here in the Grave, the tannins are a little bit looser, so that makes the wines a little bit better faster at being drunk and enjoyed at a bit of a younger age. But it also makes some fantastic, some of the most extraordinary white wines in Bordeaux, generally with a large proportion of barrel fermented Sauvignon Blanc. Those ones are extremely complex and surprisingly age-worthy white wines. I personally worked in this area and got to taste white wines as old as the 1950s, different vintages from the 1950s and they were outstanding, surprisingly vibrant for their age. That's how exceptional they are. So collectible dry border wines and Grave are somewhat synonymous, worth remembering. Finally, as my fourth bonus point, just for you, I'll add that the most expensive wine in the Bordeaux wine region is made, yes, you've guessed it, in the Grave area. 
This wine is called the Liber Pater. It's recently overtaken Petrus of Pomerol as the priciest flasks in Bordeaux. Extremely rare wine, very expensive, made from ancient local grape types. Also worth having in mind. Okay, so clearly at this point with the three previous episodes about the wines from Bordeaux and the Grave wines that we've just talked about, we've clearly covered the majority of all of the top wines from Bordeaux. But let's not forget another few important names and another bonus that I'll throw in chapter three of this episode. Beyond the wines from Pomerol and Saint-Emilion on the right bank that we discussed in episode one, the right bank also includes very respected Merlot-based appellations in the name of number one, Côte de Bourg. This is a relatively small appellation that's rising in popularity as it offers excellent age-worthy wines of great quality. With one name that stands out as the most reputable estate there, that is called Roque de Cambe. Look out for this one, especially from the Côte de Bourg. Number two, there's Fronsac and Canon Fronsac together. Canon Fronsac is a small area within the larger Fronsac appellation that on paper includes some of the best wines here, like Chateau Junome, Au Masori or Chateau du Gabi. But Fronsac also includes excellent prestigious names, such as Chateau La Rivière, Chateau La Vieille Cure or Chateau Fontenil. And let's finish off by talking about a few second wines of top estates as well as some unusual and some rarities around the Bordeaux wine world. Pretty much every top chateau in Bordeaux makes what we call a second wine or a second label. What happens briefly in terms of winemaking, since I am a winemaker, is that every vintage, each property makes the best possible wine that they can out of every vineyard that they own. Pretty straightforward. Once that's done, they take the best wines they have, they marry them harmoniously, doing what we call the assemblage, or that's the blending, to form the best possible blend using certain proportions of different grapes to reach the perfect balance of body, elegance, etc. in their wine. All of the vineyards that are not good enough to go in the first wine, that is called the Grand Vin, or the Grand Wine, go into their second label. Although not as age-worthy or expensive as the Grand Vins, the second wines can be fantastic wines to collect and taste, especially from great vintages where even lower vineyards make outstanding wines, right? They do give access to the world of Grand Cruz and are more enjoyable to drink at a younger age, and they're more affordable as well. There are hundreds of second wines, but let's just mention some big names such as Pavillon Rouge de Chateau Margaux, Les Forts de Chateau Latour, Les Carruades de Lafitte Rothschild. Some of those second wines uh, of the top growth, the Premier Grand Cru Classé, often command higher prices than lesser growth first wines. And virtually the only thing that we haven't covered at this point in this Bordeaux series, as far as the finest Bordeaux wines are concerned, obviously that's what we're talking about. Those are the few but very important white wines made in Medoc and dry whites from Sauternes. We talked about sweet wines from Sauternes, they make some dry whites as well. Even though those dry whites aren't the speciality of those areas, Medoc doesn't make much white wines, but some chateaus have specific plots of land that are extraordinary for making white wines, so they do. This gives birth to very, very rare but extraordinary whites from top properties, such as the white wine by Chateau Margaux that's called the Pavillon Blanc. There's the Vin Blanc de Chateau Palmer next to Chateau Margaux in Margaux as well. The white wine from saint Estef by Chateau Cosse des Tournelles, the Blanc by Chateau Lingebage, or the dry whites made by top properties in Sauternes like the Y by Chateau Dickem or the R by Chateau Rieusec. All of these are extraordinary white wines. Finally, and to be very, very complete about Bordeaux, I'll finish by mentioning that you may also find some rarities scattered around Bordeaux, special cuvées made by perhaps lesser known producers, but using some specific vineyard plots that they have. Sometimes they can reach the highest quality, even though they're not supposedly in the best areas. Like some of the garagist wines that you may found, this is a movement that of people that 
care so much about their specific vineyard that they can reach incredible quality even though they're not necessarily in the best appellations and there's also this wine made by Chateau Coute that I made a complete video about that's just absolutely an outstanding outstanding wine and I'll leave it here for today thank you for watching next up I will be talking about burgundy wines also some of the rarest and most demanded collectible wines from France I will see you soon in the wonderful world of the fine and rare wine world on the RT Wine Exchange channel. Make sure to subscribe if you want to follow up when we talk about Burgundy. I will see you soon in the wonderful world of fine and rare wines. Cheers.